language. And I mean, even from us as an elementary school student, figurative language is kind of a hard thing to understand when you're first learning that. So I've kind of worked on this. I did a little bit of this with Volpe's class, and I thought it was a perfect example for this class. On the projection, I have some of my standards up here. Overall, it's uh, determining the meaning of figurative language and then using it in context and basing context clues to figure out what the meaning would be. So this would probably be between third and fifth grade. And I came up with three centers, but two of them are repeated because it kind of works out better number-wise. So center one is going to be over here with Hannah and Tani. And this is varying between, it, it's kind of a, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, constructivism. It kind of is, it builds up from okay. level one to level three. Mm -hmm. So level one... Graduated, graduated. right? <laughs> so level one would be the very basic. They have a very hard time relating these things to their native language, and they might not be comfortable actually speaking in terms of the figurative language. So what we have here is I use the book A Chocolate Mousse for Dinner, it was one of my favorite books growing up, and it has all sorts of goofy examples of figurative versus literal language. This one says that lions prey on other animals, so lions <laughs> preying on other animals. And what I did for this activity over here was basically I took pictures from the book and cut them out, and then I took actual pictures based off of the literal meaning. So for example, here we have chocolate mousse and then a chocolate mousse. Mm -hmm. And basically what they have to do at the center is match up the literal meaning versus the figurative meaning. And then I'll also leave the book here, so if they're interested in reading it, if they want to just look through more pictures, they can. Although I did take out the one with Santa Claus because I know how that can be controversial. So, <laughs> the second center, which is going to be this group here and this group over here, going to be the second level, so they might be a little more comfortable with the English language, but still maybe a little icky. So here I have a bunch of sentence strips. You guys can see here a bunch of sentence strips with just full sentences, but then in italics there is the figurative, the figure of speech, the expression. And so based on the context clues of the simple sentence, they're going to have to figure out what the meaning Give is. Us an example. So for this one, let's see, this example is Superman is as brave as a lion. So what would that mean, being as brave as a lion? Well, okay, they're going to be big and they're going to be strong and powerful, things like that. Uh, let's see, what's another good one? So let's see, what's this one? Oh, she couldn't make up her mind. Her mother told her to sleep on it. So would that mean to actually sleep on the idea that they're trying to make up on? No. It means you have to sleep on it. You have to figure it out. You have to <laughs> wait it out over time. And they each have different cards and sample sentences. And then the third group, which would be kind of the most advanced, so this is kind of like if they're more, they're pretty comfortable in both languages, but they still need a little extra practice with it. I actually have little like, uh, what would they be called? Like double entry journals. Nice. So I put a couple, there, the instructions are also in here, and then I put several example, sen, uh, example phrases and figurative speech. For example, this one's like couch potato. <coughs> you guys already wrote on this one. Uh, of just different examples, and then on the very last section, it just says other expressions that they might be able to think of that's not related to the other ones. And then they can actually write ones that are similar to their native language as compared to the ones that we say. For example, the one that I used before that Lewis actually had mentioned was real that I found out from a friend is that uh, brown noser in English translates to a Spanish term that means sock sucker. So, it was really different, but as it turns out, that's an actual expression. A sock sucker. A sock sucker. I didn't know. Cortino. So, so Tiffany already wrote... For busy as a bee, she wrote, I was running around like a chicken with no head. <laughs> so right. that's a perfect example. Very and good. so now I kind of did it run out. Uh, so I'm still going. At this point, I would let everybody kind of work in their centers, and then after a couple of minutes, still rotate, because even though they might be a little more advanced and certain centers might fit in better with the more advanced, it's still good to kind of circulate and actually 
become accustomed to all the different examples because it's also kind of a little, I, I feel that it would be a little unfair because the kids that are upper level might think, okay, this isn't fair. Why do they get to look at the pictures and I don't get to like match up the picture ones? So that's why I kind of have everybody work on it and then rotate again. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to, you can just spend like one or two minutes working on it and then we'll just get up and switch. Okay.